Look at a satellite image of the Great Lakes around summer, and you might notice that one of them has a lot of green in it. That's algae. Lots and lots of it. But where is it coming from and why is it here? To find the answer, we need to travel upstream to the source. The fertilizers used in agriculture, or even at home, are one of the major contributors to this problem, specifically the phosphorus, which is common in all fertilizers, whether man-made or even organic. Phosphorus runoff can cause algae to bloom, or more specifically cyanobacteria to bloom, and those can cause threats to the biology living in the lakes and the rivers and streams, but also can cause threats to public health. If too much algae pollutes our water, it can overtake or even kill off native species. And no surprise, it isn't good for drinking either, which isn't good for the millions of people that rely on this massive fresh water source for their drinking water. I know what you're probably thinking. Why don't we just stop using phosphorus? Well, it's not that simple. Phosphorus is an essential component for all living things. Life wouldn't be possible without it. It helps things grow from new lawns, to the food that we eat, to even the unwanted things, like algae. But if we use too much, whatever isn't consumed by our crops can run off into our streams, rivers, and eventually our lakes. In this case, Lake Erie. From there, phosphorus will keep doing what it does best, helping to feed the already present algae, allowing it to grow and multiply to massive levels. When you add phosphorus beyond what the plant needs, it accumulates in the soil and eventually accumulates to high enough concentrations that it becomes more soluble in water. And every time you get a rainfall event or a flow event, it's taken that dissolved phosphorus with it. On average, for every one acre of farm field, about a mason jar's worth of phosphorus runs off. And although that may not sound like a lot, with over five million acres of farm fields in the western Lake Erie Basin, it adds up. So, working with farmers means that we can reduce the highest percentage of phosphorus from entering Lake Erie. You know, nutrients are good, they make plants grow, but if you have too much of them, they can become pollutants. But it's, it's really hard for somebody that they can't physically see. Phosphorus in water is clear, you can't, it doesn't look like there's a problem. Phosphorus is a complicated molecule. It can attach to soil particles as a solid, the stuff we can see, but it can also dissolve in water, which is something we can't see. As you can imagine, we've done a pretty good job of reducing the particulate phosphorus, but dissolved phosphorus presents a whole new set of challenges. So what can we do about it? Well, if we know the pathway phosphorus takes, whether that's through surface runoff or tile drainage, we can put filtration points along its route. This allows us to retain the excess phosphorus, but still let good, clean water continue onto places that need it. These filtration points, or phosphorus filter beds, are placed along the edge of farm fields, which inherently means that they don't interfere with the growing of crops. It's like a giant water filter. You collect water from the landscape, either in surface runoff or coming out of a tile drain like we have here, and you force that water through this filtration material, and clean water goes out. A phosphorus filter bed is relatively simple to make. It's essentially made up of a hole in the ground, a filtration material that can hold and retain the phosphorus, and a way for the water to continually pass through it. The filtration material can be any number of elements, from manufactured to even byproduct materials like steel slag, which is common in Ohio. These materials attract the phosphorus like a magnet. And because it acts like a magnet, the slag can be loosely packed, meaning it won't restrict water flow. Over time, when the slag becomes too saturated with phosphorus, it can then be removed and reused for other purposes, like road construction material. Pound for pound, these phosphorus filter beds actually cost half as much to operate and remove phosphorus compared to industrial water treatment facilities. And as basic as they are, that means that their look and shape are easy to manipulate based on their location needs. You can put them almost anywhere. As long as phosphorus-rich water can find its way to the filter bed, clean water can flow out. Legacy phosphorus is not a problem that's going to go away anytime soon. It took several decades to build up our phosphorus levels. On the flip side, it's going to take many decades to drop those concentrations down. But in the meantime, we have to use all the tools that we can as that soil slowly leaks out dissolved phosphorus.
Water connects us all, so what we do on the landscape, so how we manage our farm fields, does directly impact those folks who might live an hour, two hour, three hours away. There's a range of solutions that are going to make economic sense for farmers to do. And then there's a range of practices that are going to benefit the environment. What we need to do is we need to find out where those two circles overlap, where the farmer gets a win and where the environment gets a win as well. Keeping Lake Erie clean is vital to all that rely on it. And working with farmers lets us stop it from turning green.